good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us on this beautiful Friday for BC Today. Well, there's some spooky news about ICBC that's being revealed today. The ghoulish revelations have been unearthed by the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. They say that drivers in BC now officially pay the highest auto insurance rates in the country. My guest this afternoon is the Federation's BC director, Chris Sims. Hi, Chris. Hi, thank you so much for the invite. Yeah, well, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Scary news. It's very scary news, but it's one of those things, right? It's such a beautiful day today. Everybody's planning their Halloween parties over the weekend. You can either laugh or cry. And so we had a bit of fun today. We tried to laugh a little bit and point out the fact that the ICBC was hatched back in the 1970s, same era as the Gremlin and the Pinto. And so <laughs> I'm dressed in head to toe in my uh, my platform shoes, polyester bell bottoms, and my gigantic perm wig uh, just to poke <laughs> some fun, just to poke some fun at ICBC and say, guys, come on, you got to get it together. We can't keep on trucking. We got to change the way that we do insurance in this province. And yeah, it's official. Unfortunately, we are now paying the highest auto insurance rates in all of Canada. Up until now, we were second only to Ontario. But we went and took a really hard look at that Ernst & Young data that they did. Mm -hmm. Turns out we spend $1,550 per year on average for auto insurance. And after the rate hike that was just announced, so for 2017, that's going up to 1680 by comparison, wow. uh, Ontario yeah. is about 1400 bucks. Yeah, that's still high, but ours is astronomical. Yep, we now blow them out of the water. We are now, unfortunately, the leader in insurance costs across the country. And it's just something that, you know, I was born and raised in B.C., but I've lived in different provinces, including Ontario and Nova Scotia. Other provinces have cheaper rates, and other provinces have competition in auto insurance. You know, it's no longer the boogeyman that some people thought that it was. We've got private insurance in Alberta. Nova Scotia has private insurance. My insurance, I don't know about you, my insurance in Nova Scotia was half of what it is here, mm. and I'm a great driver. It's, it's a really shocking amount. Mine's gone up uh, $10 a month, and oh. I haven't run into a single thing my entire life. Or no, had, exactly. You know, I think I had a speeding ticket. Uh, and this is the thing is there's no and this is the thing is there's there's no end in sight right uh, if ICBC stays the way it is and we just keep bandaging it over and trying to brace ourselves for more increases we're just going to keep paying more and that's why we're we're calling on the government we know they're reviewing it right now and we applaud that we're glad that they recognize this is a big deal and a big problem but our idea was if you don't want to get rid of ICBC altogether change it turn it into a co-op, mutualize it so that it's owned by BC drivers who pick it, and then open that little corporation, that new co-op, up to private competition. And then people can have a choice. They can pick ICBC in a mutualized form, or they can try their luck with a private insurance uh, company. And see, you know, many times with private insurance companies, you can group your insurance. So, for example, me personally, we grouped our auto insurance, my husband and I, with our content insurance and our house insurance, and it really lowers your rate. That was our own experience. And I know hmm. other people have had similar ones. It's great. Well, that's a tip that I'm, I'm going to take away with me. Um, yeah. Since we're back in the 70s and the, the, yeah. the land of Pintos, I wonder, I wonder how much it was to insure a Pinto back then. Let's talk about the formation of ICBC, Dave Barrett. That's right. And so this was formed by the NDP government back in the 1970s, 1973. And at the time, there were dozens of different insurance companies, and it was a bit of a mess. And people were having trouble earnestly being able to get their insurance in order and find proper auto insurance. And so we think with, you know, the best of intentions, Probably not the best of outcomes, but the best of intentions back then, the NDP government of the day formed ICBC. But now, it's 2017, we have other auto insurance corporations and other examples across the country, different formulas across the country, and here we are, stuck with ICBC, and it is now the highest. You know, the argument for government insurance and and Crown Corporation insurance always is, is that you get better service and lower rates. That's always been the argument for those who like this sort of thing. It's not working. No, it's really not. 
It's not working. BC Today listeners, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation says it's official. Drivers in British Columbia now pay the highest auto insurance rates in the country. What do you think of that? You can join us toll-free from Kelowna, 1-855-686-1161. In Victoria, 250-386-1161. Star 1070 on your cell phone. You can email us, talk at cfax1070.com. We're also on Facebook, where Rick writes... That's because the government uses ICBC like a bank, taking withdrawals whenever money is needed. He's speaking of the former Liberal government. Exactly, and that's a great point. And that's another reason why we think ICBC needs to be changed. Because right now, he's absolutely right, and I'm glad he posted that. Right now, the government of the day, depending on whatever party it is, the last one just did it before they were bounced out of power, they just rate it. They use it as a cash cow to cover over and paper over their budget shortfalls. And that's not fair. You know, people pay through the nose for their auto insurance rates in B.C. And even if it's the highest in the country, they at least expect it to go towards insuring their vehicle, not to go after budget deficits or whatever party happens to be in power. And we think that if you just change ICBC so that B.C. drivers are the shareholders, you own it, it's cooperative insurance, that takes the politicians' hands out of it. And we no longer need to see them raiding the piggy bank when they feel like it. And we also don't need to hear about auto insurance rates every single election cycle. Other provinces don't have these conversations. They have other ones about hydro prices or what's happening in the oil sands. They have these conversations, but not about auto insurance. Mm. Here, it seems every time we're having an election, we need to worry about what the other driver next to us at the stoplight is doing for their driving habits. Well, I'm not... be that way. I'm, uh, you know, choked that I have to pay an extra... 120 bucks a year yeah. and this yeah. is i this is i mean before they are going to start to deal with uh the mess that icbc is in let's get to the phones here hi meddy thanks for calling bc today uh, good afternoon thank you for taking my call i i remember before the liberals come to power we had the icbc was the lowest in country the rate and also at that time the same uh, taxpayers association were pushing for privatization I believe this is this is done intentionally, intentional mismanagement. The government documents show that they hire supervisors to create crisis in order to force change. This is their own writing in their own document of the government of BC. So this is done intentionally. Instead of do, uh, privatizing ICBC, we should go prosecute these politicians that are working for private interests when they come po- to power. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, thank, thank you. Thanks, Matty. maddie has got uh, quite the theory there, Chris. I don't know if we were the lowest in Canada, because across Canada, there's a lot of different formulas. You'd have to really go back and take a look at it. Go to the Insurance Bureau of Canada and look back through their years. They have the charts up there. And go and look at other provinces. So, for example, the province of Quebec has the lowest auto insurance rates in Canada, but they also have a unique system because they're Quebec, right? And so they have a special system where the public insurance, the government covers injuries to the person, to the body, to the driver, whereas the private insurance covers off any damage to the car. That's simplifying it. Of course, it's more complicated than that, but that is generally how their blended system works. And the average Quebecer spends about $700 a year on their auto insurance rates. And these are for fancy cars. You know, people drive everywhere, all through Montreal and Quebec City and all sorts of other cities. There's super fancy cars, lots of high-end real estate there, and yet they pay the lowest in Canada. And so the idea that we were rock bottom before the Liberals took over, I'd have to check that because there's so many different systems across the country. That would really surprise me. And some and frankly, some that, are, yeah, as you're pointing out, are cheaper. Go ahead, Chris. Exactly, and some are cheaper. And, like, I, you know, I hear, I hear his concern about going full privatization. And so that's why we're offering what we think is the Goldilocks solution. Just change it. Just, just mutualize it so that it's, like, actually public. It's, like, literally owned by BC drivers as shareholders, take government out of the equation so they can't mess with it anymore, and then next to that, next to that, open that up to competition. And then BC drivers can pick it. They can pick ICBC and stick with the public insurance if they want to, or they could go private, and that way at least you have a choice. Yeah, uh, and and then it's, uh, you know, driven by who's got the lowest rate, and that's what you're going to go with, competition, right? Let's get Tracy in. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for calling BC Today. I have two vehicles. One is a small passenger car. 
I pay less than $80 a month because I haven't had a claim at all since I started driving 30 years ago. Um, I have a brand new delivery van that I use for work and it's $160 a month, which people will think is expensive, but I came from Edmonton and I was delivering pizza and went to get delivery insurance on my car to deliver pizza. And they said, you can't get delivery insurance for pizza. They won't do it. So you have to drive with just regular insurance. And if you get stopped by the cops, you can lose your insurance. But if I had this delivery vehicle there, the private insurance was going to be $4,900 a year. In Alberta? What? Yeah, yeah. The company I called for the, for, the, for the delivery insurance, they said we have one rate for delivery insurance. For everybody, it's forty nine hundred dollars a year. So that's wow. and I said, I said, well, it's a good thing that I can't put delivery insurance for my pizza delivery then. So, so you're happy with and, the BC and, rates? And on my yeah. and on my car here, I went to I every once in a while I take the insurance off the car and put it in storage, and then I need the car, so I take it back out, put the insurance back on, and even with them starting me over from from having a lapse in insurance, I still have a low rate. And they, I, I asked about getting private insurance here because uh, the Coast Capital that I deal with, they do have a company that will give you private insurance. When they, when they looked it up to compare, the private insurer was more expensive than the ICBC here. Wow, lots to chew on there, Chris. Um, and I'm going to let you uh, digest that because we're overdue for a break here. Thanks for calling, Tracy. Uh, we'll get your thoughts on what uh, Tracy had to say. When we come back, we are with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation BC director, Chris Sims, in her 70s outfit, uh, apparently roaring around in a pinto as well. <laughs> we're back right after this. Welcome back. Thanks a lot for tuning in to BC Today. Well, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation says it is official. Drivers in BC now pay the highest auto insurance rates in Canada. My guest right now is Chris Sims. She is the Canadian Taxpayers Federation BC director. And uh, to mark this occasion, tongue in cheek, uh, Chris just sent me a photo of her 70s outfit. <laughs> And it's it's fantastic. I mean, you like is that from a collection? That outfit is amazing. Uh, but I, I, I like the horrified look on your face. So it works in terms of thought. The rights are crazy, right? It is. Well, I've got a Halloween outfit, and uh, it's perfect 1970s, and the full perm wig, and y- you name it. And honestly, I, you know, I'm a child of the 70s, so I, I like the 70s. But what I don't like is just paying this amount for auto insurance. And so it's Friday. It's beautiful. We're trying to have a little bit of fun, poke a little bit of fun at the fact that we're still stuck with this corporation. That was that is. was formed in the 70s. That yeah. was formed in the 70s, like I said, the era of the gremlin and the pinto. And so we're just saying we need an update. And to the to the previous caller's point, I hear his point. I frankly don't know how he manages to pay 80 bucks a month on a vehicle. Maybe it's something where he barely uses it. Like he said, he takes it in and out of his garage. But my husband, just as a personal example, you know, he's got a perfect driving record, you know, has a, a truck that he barely uses. It's basically we joke around and say he's got a, a child's wagon level of insurance on it. <laughs> and it's well over a hundred dollars a month and so you know if if you're going to and from work you're paying through the nose uh, in bc uh, through icbc and his point about the private insurance i just wanted to make a point there private insurance in bc cannot give you your basic auto insurance they're only there for optional and what the private insurance corporations tell me is that they can't give a really good competitive rate for that optional insurance in bc because they don't have data And, of course, insurance is all about risk, probability, and data. And since ICBC holds all of that data to themselves, private companies, even for simple things like optional insurance for your car, it's really tougher for them to compete in many cases. So they're they're kind of working in the dark there. BC Today listeners, what do you think about uh, it being official that we pay more in auto insurance than anybody else in Canada we do here in British Columbia. The phone number toll-free from Kelowna is 1-855-686-1161. In Victoria, 250-386-1161. Star 1070 on your cell phone. You can email us, talk at cfax1070.com. We're also on Facebook. I'd also like to hear your comments uh, about what uh, we're hearing here from Chris, what she's proposing, and uh, turning this thing into a co-op owned by BC drivers. Uh, over to Facebook here, Mark writes in, the ICBC and 
hydro profits should not go into general revenue. How about the B.C. government stop using accounting trickery and actually balancing the budget based on legitimate make-or-break accounting? The B.C. books are smoke and mirrors, and people should be held accountable for the sham they are. Chris. We can't agree more. We, you know, it ticks us right off. It's right there in our top 10 of what we want out of the government, any government in B.C., and that is stop rating crown corporations like B.C. Hydro and ICBC. It's not fair. It's dishonest. And it really breeds mistrust. You know, if we're paying for hydro, we expect that to go to power our house. We don't expect our dollars to go towards the government to paper over whatever they want to. It's really, really unjust. We agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as individual citizens uh, that that would border on uh, perhaps criminality. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, let's get into uh, some more calls here. Hi, James. Thanks for calling BC today. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Um, honestly, I don't have a problem with them using uh, money from corporations to uh, balance books and budgets i think the big problem is you don't have enough money in enforcement and uh, without enforcement then you have people doing whatever they want um not paying enough uh um fines to cover the uh the costs of people getting in accidents more enforcement lowers the accident rate and uh puts more money in the coffers okay um, which will in turn lower the rates interesting james uh chris I see a lot of traffic enforcement out there. I don't know about you. And uh, whenever there's a traffic accident or a collision, as we call it, because they don't like saying accidents, every time there's a collision, you know, ICBC has to follow up on that by law. Police are often there. So the idea of enforcement, you know, I see uh, tons of enforcement going on around us. And the other issue that people sometimes bring up with ICBC, they'll often say, well, what about licensing? What about that sort of stuff? Well, other provinces do that through their Ministry of Transportation. They'll have service centers just like we do when we go to get our health cards, um, get our care cards. Um, That's handled in other manners by other forms of government uh, at very similar prices. And so the idea of it somehow we would become this unregulated Wild West because we have an option for private insurance we just don't see that bearing out. And again, we just encourage folks, pick up the phone, call your call your relatives, call your friends, phone people that live in other provinces that have similar driving records to you, and compare the cost. We really pay a lot more here in B.C. than other provinces, and we're just pleading with the government, and we know they're doing a review right now, and we're so happy about that. We're just saying, please consider fundamental change. Don't just try to do a Band-Aid here. Change ICBC so that people have, a, have an option. Let's go to Bill. Hi, Bill. Thanks for calling BC today. Hello, Bill. Oh, hi. Hi, you're on the radio. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see BC is uh, one of my worst thoughts in the world. These guys, uh, I, I have a, a class one and a class six. These guys, uh, for every year, it's something else, yeah? Yeah. Uh, like two years ago, it was uh, we got to re uh, uh, re test you. Uh, that cost me like eighteen hundred bucks. You know, uh, I had to go rent because at that time I drove a single axle tractor and single axle trailers. Yeah, so I needed to rent a tandem tandem to take this re test. So then it was my motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, it's a gold wing, so it's a pretty big bike to do these little figure eights with, so I had to rent a smaller bike to do this with, you know? So all in all, this whole thing costs a lot of money, and, and my pickup here, I've owned it since it was new. Uh, I never had an accident. Uh, I think I got a speeding ticket one time out at the ferry there <laughs> uh, about six or eight years ago, but it's, it's uh, my insurance, like it's $70 a month for this bloody pickup, and I retired now, so I don't work. And, you know, it's just on and on. Bill, um, you want to stay tuned for the next piece I'm going to do as well on uh, ageism and driving uh, and about people having to pay, seniors having to pay a whole lot of money to, to get their medical test done. Uh, Chris, uh, what do you think of what Bill's saying? I think what Bill's saying here is that he wants options. You know, when he's talking about using his bike and using his vehicle and having to switch his bike, that sort of thing. Again, if you have an option to either group your insurance with another corporation or do a mix between ICBC and an actual private company that has competitive rates, we just see this as a way of reducing rates. You know, if you live in a town that has one grocery store, 
you pay a lot more for food. If you live in a town with three grocery stores, they compete for your money. This is just such a basic understanding. Uh, so that's why we want competition in the insurance marketplace in BC, because we want people to pay less. We're just, I hear it in his voice. He's already paying through the nose. Yep. He's maxed out. Chris, you're anything but basic. You're a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> I like the way you roll with this, because it's it's not good news, but... Uh, We'll celebrate the 70s and uh, maybe the, the death knell to ICBC at some point. I uh, appreciate your time, my friend. Thank you so much.